So I'm looking at the waveform here, trying to see if anything sort of sticks out that's peeking up. Just around the 200 range, I see something peeking up there. Let's see. spike up right so let's let's cut a little deeper into that one let's see if we got anything else here oh right there see this a little uh, this is a little wider I think those bells we have start over here actually somewhere. Yeah. I'm sure we can find some in that sound. so bad, but let's see. After doing this for a while, you'll, you'll start to develop a habit of knowing where those frequencies usually are. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it's all practice. All right, right there. You see? Almost anything that sort of like just peaks up, right? And it has that hollow tone. Alright, so we worked on the first three melodies. Um, I mean, you could do this obviously with, you know, all of your instruments. Uh, you don't really have to do it with your 808, in my opinion. Um, you won't need to do this in your drums. What you want to do with your drums are um, use compressors and some EQs. So we're going to work on our kick drum now. We'll solo that out. Okay, so um, let's see here. We're going to drop the EQ on this. And you got some presets to work with, and that's all cool if you want to use those, but uh, I've sort of stayed away from them, I guess you could say. I don't know. I mean, I've tried them, but you know, they don't really work out for my drum, so. Um, all right, now let's shape this up a little bit. I want a little bit of a more of a knock in it, and uh, the knock usually happens for this kick, anyways, anywhere from two to five hundred. So I'm gonna uh, make this a bit smaller, like that. Okay, so you can see here now we have a little more knock in that kick. I'm gonna take out just a tad of that low end, not much. Okay, fine. Now let's go ahead and uh, open up that next one. That is our EQ'd snare, which we already EQ'd to give it sort of that uh, mid-range feel, that drag feel. OK, 
okay? And uh, I'm gonna bring up just a bit of that 2000 range. Just to make it a little bit brighter. Let's see what else we got here. Hi hats. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, work with this one next. What was this one here? What's that clap? brighter 2000 range around a little higher maybe to three four all right and the hi-hats let's see what they sound like can make them a bit brighter See what that sounds like with the 808. Cool. So for the 808, um, let's go ahead and add a little bit of distortion to that. You'll hear that in a lot of uh, hip hop beats today. The 808 is sort of distorted. And um, I got uh, this preset. And this is uh, the uh, Distortion 2 that I'm using. Distortion 2, okay. Oops. All right, there we go. So the pre-gain is at around 5 decibels, drives.89, and the tone is all the way up, all right? Now you can see that made it a lot louder. So we want to bring that down. See, we're at negative four now. Negative three point eight. Remember, we can make it louder later. Louder later. Louder later. Say that five times fast. <laughs> All right. So, cool. Let's see where we're at now here. Six three. 5, 4.8, still bringing that down. Bringing that kick down a bit too. What do we got now? To reset it, you just gotta click it, right? And you can see. Six nine. What about over here? Let's take a look. All right, now let's bring in all the instruments. All right, cool. So we stayed around 6.6, .6, that's fine. Um, all right, now uh, we've added all of our EQs. Let's go ahead and add some compression to that kick drum. I'm gonna use a Waze bundle for this and uh, go to my SSL compressor. Where is it here? Waves bundle, definitely a great effects package uh, to invest in. And uh, let's see what we've got here. I'll use this pumping preset for the kick here.
so now with the compressor, messed around with the uh, volume sets a little more. 6.4 is where we're at, that's fine. Okay, so we got a compressor on there now. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? So let's go ahead and file save as. I actually forgot to do this earlier. As soon as you've tracked out your um, your song or your beat, you always want to go ahead and save it as something else because if you ever want to go back to your MIDI project um, and you've saved it or <laughs> already over it with the WAV files, that's c'est la vie, man. There's no, there's no going back. So I'll call this tutorial track out and save that as okay so now I could still go back to the MIDI notes and make adjustments changes whatever I want all right cool now next um, let's go into mastering this track a little bit um, again I am NOT a mastering engineer what I use is isotope ozone 6 and uh, you can get this mastering program for I think $99 I mean it's really a great investment to uh, make your sound a little bit bigger so let me uh, import that one more time. So no, isotope six. Okay, I use the heavy classic dynamics preset. Okay, and then uh, mess around with a little bit from here. At this point, we can make it louder here. negative six you know it it allows us to use that extra space to make it louder okay if that makes sense um, I'm not gonna mess around with uh, isotope too much we might do that in a another tutorial uh, but this gives you basically the the idea of how I track out mix and master my tracks and um, I mean some projects it could take really long because um, you know there's just this one sound that's off and you can you can really hear it once you've turned down that master um, it really gives you the ability to to see your flaws once you've mastered your track and uh, a really good idea also is to uh, you know have it have it play on different speakers I mean you might have these great monitors at home uh, you know your studio monitors that uh, give you that awesome sound but then when you play it at a friend's house or you play it in your car and you, you're just like wait a second what just happened I mean it, it sounded so good on those monitors but not on this so um, I've learned a little bit from other mastering and mixing engineers that it's a good idea to track out your stuff, um, you know, mix and master it down, and then play it on different speakers. So at home, I have my regular studio monitors. I also have a, a boombox that I play this stuff on. So I could see how it sounds like on a boombox, or I go into my car and listen to it there because you'll get the understanding of what you need to change on different speakers, right? So let's say, everything sounds good um, on your on your studio monitors you take it to your car and then all of a sudden the piano completely sounds way too loud um, you know you got to find that balance in your beat to make it sound good on all platforms you know feel free to put a link in the comment of this uh, video uh, pointing us to a, a beat of yours that you've uh, used these techniques with and uh, you know we can critique it we can give you feedback uh, and vice versa so anyway I hope you guys learned something today. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Put it in the comment section. I'm off for now. Peace.